Okay, this is going to be so much fun. We are going to demonstrate physical skin exam. So, you know, one after another, one room to the next, total body skin exams. Everyone does it a little bit differently. I'm gonna go first. So what we're going to do is we've got our models. Spencer, thank you. And Camille, Camille, thank you. So we're going to start with Steve Hawks. So Steve is going to demonstrate in a real world setting, entering the exam room and then having a quick discussion with his patient and then his physical exam. And you are all the critics. So Steve, you ready? Let's play ball. All right, Steve's mic'd up. All right, I um, just like to thank uh, Camille and Spencer, their gracious uh, appreciation. It's really nice to have them be able to help us do this, and uh, we're grateful for them. And I'm excited to be able to, uh, you know, be up here and, you know, let me know when I'm doing something wrong because, uh, you know, you get a little jittery when you're in front of a, a crowd and you're going to do a physical exam on somebody. So, but yeah, Camille is going to be the patient. But before I get started with the physical exam, I'd kind of like to touch base on what happens before we enter the room? So we have our medical assistant, we have our front desk, and we really need to be appreciative. And I know Dr. Uh, um, what? You got it, Steve. Who's the doctor who was just speaking up here? Come on. Dr. Field Dr. D. Friedman, Dr. Friedman. How do I forget him? Sorry. <laughs> he talked about how important it is to praise your staff and uh, to really, you know, be, have their back. So. Um, the medical assistants are very important, so I want, you want to get the information from them before you go in the room. And so there's things that I really require is, have I seen this patient before? Are they established with the, uh, with the group or the office that you're in? Is it uh, a new patient? Uh, but more importantly, have I seen this patient before? And are they doing, if that's an established patient and I have seen them before, are they doing better with whatever complaint they have? or uh, are they doing worse? Because we need to be prepared for that. Also, they could have had a bad day. They could have had a, a, you know, come to the office and said, you know, you've got a $100 copay. They're usually not pretty, very happy when they hear a $100 copay or their insurance has changed. So you kind of want to, when you go into the room, you want to read that room and kind of get a feel for, for what's going on. And your medical assistants can be very, very helpful with that. Um, all right, let's uh, start with our physical exam. So, and you know, coming into the room, uh, you wanna, you know, obviously if it's a new patient, you want to uh, introduce yourself. And I immediately, you know, either shake a hand or fist bump, it's kinda, you don't know what to do in today's world, but you try to figure that out when you go in the room. And then I like to find the chair. I'll sit in the chair and talk to the patient, ask them how they're doing. If it's an established patient, I wanna know something about how was their vacation, and the medical assistants are good about that and putting that in the chart so you know that they were in Hawaii two months ago or six months ago they went on a vacation or they had a granddaughter or a grandson. So I think those are important things too. So I'm gonna have Camille uh, sit up here actually. So there's different kinds, yes. What, what are you examining? What do you, what's this patient here for? Uh, this is a total body skin exam. So we're going from head to toe. Now. You need a chaperone? A chaperone. Yes, I've got a medical assistant in every room I'm in, no matter male or female. Yeah, good point, very good point. Um, and there are certain patients, if you, you know, they're there for a total body exam, uh, they will, we'll get to that, but they really, it's not a total body exam because they'll say, well, I really don't want, you know, my breasts examined or I don't want my groin examined. And you just document that. You have to make sure you document those things, okay? All right, so total body exam. This is not the perfect table, but no, you can actually sit up. So I start, and I'll usually come from, the, from behind the patient, and I always start at the top and work my way down. Um, and if they have any you know, specific things that they want looked at, I will look at those first, and then I will start and say, let's, let's do the full body exam. So a cotton swab applicator I use for the hair. I didn't bring any, but you can use a tongue depressor as well. And so I kind of just start with parting of the hair and I'll just work my way on one side, trying not to mess up Camille's hair too much here. 
And while I'm looking at the hair, I'll go right to the ear and look on you know, the posterior part of the ear and as much as I can inside the ear. We've seen plenty of skin cancers and, uh, inside the ear. So we'll do the same thing on the other side without going into too great of detail. The tongue depressor is used, I use it for a lot of things, especially with liquid nitrogen. It's a great tool to, uh, when you're going to freeze something in the air, you can put this right in the canal. So I just, let's go on this side here, and you can just put it right there in the canal and you can freeze without having any of that. Even though you're not freezing in the canal, a lot of patients will flip out because they think you're freezing that's going down into the canal. Steve, do you look inside their mouth as well? Yes. I do, and I have them stick their tongue out, stick their tongue to the roof of their mouth, look at you know their teeth, and uh, but yeah, you know if they've been a smoker, it's definitely something you need to be doing. But um, also, I use the tongue depressor for liquid nitrogen around the eyes. So now I'm looking at the face. So if you've got to freeze something close to the eye, close your eye there, Camille. I'll just put it right here, and if it's right underneath, you can just put that tongue depressor right there, and that will protect the eye and make sure you tell them to keep their eyes closed. Same thing with the nostril. You can put it underneath the nostril here and keep the liquid nitrogen from spraying there. All right, so we've look at, we look at the face. I look at the eyes. I try to educate them as well as I'm doing the exam, letting them know that, you know, get your eyes checked every year, especially if they have any kind of a family history of melanoma or a personal history, that they need to get their eyes checked, that there you can actually get melanoma in the eye, so uh, so we've looked in the mouth, open up, stick your tongue out, yeah, all the way out, perfect. <clears throat> and then at this point, I drop this down and you can just hold this right here and I'll have, if, if the patient is okay, and again, one thing I always do is if I'm gonna touch the patient, I tell them I'm gonna touch you and then I'm gonna palpate these areas here. So I am always, you know, if I palpate the lymph nodes on a, personal history of malignant melanoma, I'm always telling them I'm going to palpate here. And then as we go frontward here, we, I go down all the way to where the nipple area is on a female. And then I pull it back up here. We'll examine the arms, go all the way down the arms and always examine the fingernails and the, uh, the fingers, turn the arm over, put the arm in the air, look underneath into the axilla area. Pull down at this point. And again, cover the breast area of the patient. I have, I was just telling Camille when we were in the back room there. I have a patient that every six months she comes in, knock on the door, I open the door, and she's standing there butt naked <laughs> with high heels on, okay? <laughs> and she goes, I'm ready, it's my six month appointment, and it's just the way it is. It's, you know, so we don't worry about a gown with her. There's no gown. <laughs> mm -hmm. Same thing on this side. And then what I'll do is I'll have you stand up and this is where, you know, get comfortable. You don't need to be doing this kind of thing. Get a chair in your office, wheels around, sit in the chair so you can actually get a good exam. <clears throat> and so the female, what I'll do is stay turned around this way, sorry. So we pull this all the way up to where the breast area is so I can examine the abdomen. And then I grab the underwear and tell them I'm gonna just examine the groin area. We pull that down, back up, and then face me. And we look at the legs, turn around. Same thing on the back side. And if I'm palpating and touching, I always tell the patient you're going to be touching them. Because they kind of sometimes, I've had patients, uh, you know, not very comfortable when they kind of jump. And so you just make sure that you tell them what you're doing. So we see the back side, and then I have them sit back down in the chair. Yeah. And then grab that one. Tell me. And then we look at the bottom of the feet, look in between the toes. She's got a list. She comes up, we're all, we're finished. She's got this list, and I'm like, oh, let me look at that list. So I take it from them, okay, and I wanna look at the list. That way I get it out of their hands, and then I give it to my medical assistant, and they will say, oh, well, you need to check this spot on the arm, and we go over those things. That's one th way I do that. Is there another way you guys handle the list? Shred the list. Shred yeah. it. <laughs> I, I usually take a quick peek at the list and then I say, well, we're going to do a full body skin exam and I'll let you know, you know, as we go. Uh -huh. um, just so you kind of know, I, I'd rather see it up front so I kind of know exactly what's on their list. Is it 
you know, just spots that we're looking at, or is there spots in hair loss and toenail fungus right. and mm -hmm. all of that? <laughs> so you know how to prioritize. Right, and that's, that's a good point. I like the list, and I'll ask the MA, if they have a list, make sure you please get that list right off the bat. But in Camille's case, she just brought that list right out at the end. So that's where you're like, do I, well, you say, oh, well, I already looked at that spot. I think it's really important that you say, oh, let's look and look again and make sure that spot's nothing. You know, unless that list is like 40, you know, things long, then we're in trouble. I think one of the other things that's super helpful is to tell them when they're giving you a list of things to check, to start on the bottom and go up or the top and go down so you're not mm -hmm. bouncing around all yeah. over the place. Mm -hmm. Right. One other thing I want to mention quickly too is buy one of these, they're $20 on Amazon. And I've had patients that have told me, you know, like, that is really nice that you look at things. I've had several patients that have told me, you're like the first person that's actually looked at me and touched my skin. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, you know, uh, that's embarrassing, but it, I've had a few patients tell me that. So get one of these, they're super cheap. It's not a dermatoscope, but it does help you, actually, it helps me at least, to be able to just shine that light on and be able to look a little bit closer, and the patients really appreciate that. And then if you need to look at something a little bit better and you know, look at the network of a mole, and you pull out your dermatoscope, and then that's another good thing that's been, I think patients appreciate, and it helps us to, to really make a better decision on whether we need to do a biopsy. Hey Steve, one thing I just wanna throw in there is, I always see if the patient has actually had a skin exam in the past, because sometimes they're nervous and they don't know what you're gonna do, and yeah. if they haven't, I'll say, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start at the top, I'm going to touch you, I'm going to feel things and look at things. Right. That's, that's good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having said that, <laughs> there's um, a patient of mine, I was just telling Spencer, that uh, there's a physician that does a, like, seriously total body exam where she looks into the anus and does a great job. She's a great physician and does a very, very good job. But the patient came to me and said, you know, um, I said, he goes, I, I need a, you know, a skin exam. Then he kind of got a little squirmish and he says, you know, are you going to like look in my anus? And I said, well, I can if you want me to. I mean, that's, you know, <laughs> and he goes, please don't because the last person that did, I felt violated before, yeah. after the exam. And I'm like, oh, you know, I knew exactly who it was, but she's, <laughs> she's a great physician. I'm not bad mouthing her in any way. She's a very good physician and does really good work. But I think you just got to tell them, the patient, what's going on, like you said. You ready, Spencer? Camille, thank you. Steve, great job. Well, Camille, you're a PA. You can comment, too, yes. as we're rolling through this. All right, Wendy, you're in the hot spot. All right. Have a, if you'll have a seat right here. Yes. So again, I thought Steve had some great um, points about what to expect when you go into the room. Um, whether they're a new patient, it kind of lets me know that I need to explain, like Christine said, a little bit what, what I'm going to be doing with the patient and what they can es expect. I also want to know if they've had a, had a history of a skin cancer. Because one, I want to know where it was, when it was, because that depends on when I do follow-ups. And I want to look at the scar. Um, we have found just in that little bit of pre-information, we have found patients that have slipped through the cracks that the surgeon had called them with their squame and the patient never had called them back. So it had not been treated within the past six months. So I do think that's important information to have. Um, so I like to go into the room and I usually pull up my chair and sit down, talk to them, let them know Again, what I'm going to be doing, if they have any concerns or the list, because I like to have that first. Um, and then because I am kind of short, um, I like to men, for my men patients, I like to do the face, the head and the neck. Um, and then somebody brought up when we were um, prepping for this is also the head and the neck are the places that we do the biopsies on the most. So if you do the head and the neck, are gonna do a biopsy on the nose or the ear, your MA can be setting that up and being prepared. I thought that was a great um, point to do in the head and the neck first. Um, so ask them if they have um, history, if they're a new patient, 
I want to know if they've had a history of skin cancers, history of melanoma, or a family history of melanoma. And, you know, they all say that they have a family history of melanoma. You may have to take a minute and say, okay, where was it? How was it treated? That kind of thing. Because you do want to boil that down a little bit and decide if that's really a melanoma or a non-melanoma skin cancer. Because they all think skin cancers are all melanomas, or they do where I'm from. Okay. Um, Y'all have anything else to add? I had a comment about the scar. So for patients that have a history of melanoma, you definitely look at the scar and document mm -hmm. that yes. you looked at it and there's no pigment in that scar. Yes. You know, and even, you know, there's some topicals that treat non-melanoma skin cancers. I have found lots of recurrent lesions in those topicals too. So again, you want to know where they were, know how they treated it, and look and, and see if you see anything recurrent. Um, so the other thing is, is not everybody's going to be a spry young person, right? You have, the, you have the person in the wheelchair, the person who refuses a certain body area or a crotchety older gentleman that says, I'm not taking off my pants. Um, you just want to document that, document that very well that it was offered and declined. Um, again, you want to make sure you're really careful about the terminology you use in your medical records. You know, patient was grouchy and refused. No, he declined the, you know, genital exam or declined the um, lower body exam. So, okay, so I start again, head and neck, again, because once I get them on the table, I can't see the head. Um, so. I start with the head and neck. With a man, it's easier, but I either use a cotton tip applicator or a tongue depressor. But with his hair, I mean, like you, you can really see it well. I do like to use, you know, my dermatoscope, and I use that as my light because I'm, all, I'm looking at different pigmented or non-pigmented or pink lesions. Um, but, and as I'm going, I'm telling him what I'm seeing, and I think that that kind of decreases their anxiety. So you've got a nice little cherry angioma here in your scalp, and I tell them that that's a family lesion, nothing to worry about, how we treat it, how we don't treat it, that kind of thing. So I kind of keep that ongoing dialogue with them as I do the head and the neck exam, and you know, make sure you're looking behind the ears, feeling, telling them that you're gonna touch them, that kind of thing. Mouth is very important to look into, up, down, sideways. I usually tell them, you know, your, your preventative care is super important. So not just skin exams, dental exams, making sure you're seeing your dentist. Your dentist is screening for skin, or not skin, are screening for cancers as they're doing your preventative care. So as I'm doing the mouth, I kind of explain that to patients. Um, Beard area, again, you want to make sure you're looking and, and pulling up the hair um, make, on the beard area, making sure you're seeing everything that you need to see, okay? Um, then I ask the patient to stand up. And while they're standing up, I get in my, my rolly stool and I will look at their back. Um, I will look at the, if they have their female, I'll pull their hair up, look at their neck. Again, as I'm seeing things, you have a seborrheic keratosis. This is again a genetic lesion. This is how we treat it or choose not to treat it, that kind of thing. If I see something that we're going to biopsy, I'll go ahead and tell them that I, you know this is a lesion I think we should biopsy and this is why. And if they're a new patient to a skin exam, I'll go ahead and tell them what a dermatoscope is and why we use it and why it's beneficial. Um, and you know, patients always like to know that we're up to date with technology and research and that kind of thing. So if it's a new patient, I think that that's very beneficial to tell them. You know, you want to make sure if they have on underwear that you're going to tell them you're going to pull it down, look at their, bo uh, at their buttocks, and make sure you're going all the way to the bottom of their leg. And just, just that ongoing dialogue of what you're seeing, I think, just puts people at ease. Okay, you can have a seat up here. Hey, Wendy, can I stop for one second? Sure. Can you put the slide up, please? <laughs> Spencer is a rabid Raider fan, <laughs> and if you were to take his little orange suit off, that's what you would see. <laughs> no, actually, that's not him. But that is one of my patients that I, we just wanted to talk a little bit about tattoos yes. and, mm -hmm. and how important it is to really look through those with their dermatoscope. And as you can see, there's a lesion, or a, dysplastic nevus that was taken off right on the right corner there of the 
tattoo, but I just wanted to bring that up real quick. You know, and if somebody has a lot of tattoos, I, I, I kind of take some time and I tell them, you know, we don't think that tattoos, because people can get offended or to make an assumption of what you're saying and it's not what you're saying. But uh, if they do have a lot of tattoos, a lot of dark tattoos, I'll tell them I want them to kind of look every couple of months, take a picture, zoom it in, look and see if they see um, any abnormal looking moles in there, any ulcerations, any bleeding, um, because I have taken so many and found so many melanomas or dysplastic moles um, in, a, in tattoos. So I think getting patients on board with doing their self skin exams um, is helpful as well because you know the, the trend with for the super dark tattoos it can get pretty ugly if it's not caught so and I'll just I just want to add to that I always tell patients I'm not looking at your tattoos I'm trying to look in your tattoos yes. and see what I see because a lot of times if you start looking they'll be like oh well I got this one and I'm like no, I'm not looking at that. <laughs> I don't care where you got it. Yeah, I know. Uh, I just got to look in them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, great point. So I'm a little different um, than Steve. I get my patients to, I have, our tables are reclined, so I get them to lay down. Um, you don't have to lay down. Oh, come um, on. But I, I get them to lay down. If they're a female, I tell them exactly what I'm going to do. I take one arm out at a time and tuck that under to protect and keep them covered while I look at the arm raise the arm up, look un, you know, underneath the arm, that kind of thing. Um, and then a males, most of the time I just kind of pull it, they don't care, most of the time I just kind of pull it, pull it all the way out um, and look at their arms, look it up, use my dermatoscope. Again, talk about what I'm seeing while we are um, doing the exam. Um, so again, they're kind of reclined. It's you know, I tell them that I'm going to take a peek beneath um, the underwear, pull it right down, right back up, that kind of thing. Um, and then all the way go down to the feet. Make sure you look in between the toes. Um, I had a patient, I had a 32-year-old patient last two weeks ago, and I walked in the room. You know, it's amazing, even though your medical assistants do great job giving them instructions, you walk in, they full boots on or, you know, socks and shoes on and I'll tell them, hey, go ahead and take off your socks and shoes and explain to them that melanoma really doesn't play by the rules. It can be anywhere. Um, so got him to take off his socks and shoes and 32 years old um, has a melanoma underneath um, the nail that um, has been there for three years, 32. So again, look. And the one thing, I hope you don't have on toenail polish or gel polish, but you know, these days, you know, it could be either or. But gel nail polish, I think, makes it really hard for, of course, we can't see underneath Possibly. it. And probably most of us who get gel polish push it one or two months too far, right? So we don't see our, the bottom of our, we don't see our toenails as often as we should. So if they have polish on, I tell them when you go to the salon, when they take off the polish, make sure you ask them to let you look uh, the patient to look and make sure they don't see any brown spots. Also tell them you can get some toenail fungus thickening or whitening. And if you do, just let us know, come with no nail polish. Um, goes for the fingernails too. A lot of the women will have those, the gel that you really cannot see through. Um, so I talk about um, eye exams, very important um, for eye exams for patients who either have a personal I tell every patient that it's a great screening opportunity um, for them to have eye exams every year. Um, but at least if they don't wear contacts or glasses and not held, um, you know, at, at how the eye doctors will hold you, you gotta come back to get your prescription um, every year. Um, I tell them, you know, you need to go and have a screening, especially with a, a, a personal or family history of melanoma or dysplastic um, nevi. Um, at least have a screening so that they can at least have a baseline to know that they have, they're clear or have some freckles or, or, or um, nevi back there. Wendy, um, what do you do when you have a, a patient that can't lay on their stomach but you need to do a biopsy on their lower leg? How do you handle that? So, I mean, I've gotten real, you know, I've, I've gotten down in the floor, um, you know, got them to, you know, put it on, you know, hold it on my leg. I've done, you know, done that thing. But a lot of times mobility, you know, they can most of the time lay on their side. 
Um, so I'll, I'll do a, you know, I'll do the biopsy on the side. Um, you know, a lot of our patients are elderly. That's that's when you know we're doing most of our, you know, skin exams. And a lot of times they come into the office on oxygen or COPD, and you have to be real careful laying them down and back. And again, it's important to document what you can't examine um, and why you can't examine it. If there's a reason, wheelchair refusal, whatever, um, but there are there are reasons for that. Um, that's. What, what about a patient that comes in and says, I just want this one spot checked and that's it? And, you know, me personally, I, I'm like, oh, okay, that's great. We look at it and I go, oh, that's fine. It's nothing to worry about. It's a genetic spot, like in seborrheic keratosis. But I always try to mention, hey, you know, you can't see your back. Why don't you just let me just look at your back while you're here? It won't take that long. And yep. inevitably, you know, occasionally I'll find a skin cancer there. So some patients are really adamant. They don't want to do anything. They want to get there and get out of the room. And uh, so sometimes I try to, and so I've had patients say, no, I'm, my back's fine. So I just let it go, but how well, do you yeah, guys I do the that? same. I at least yeah. say, can I at least look at your back so I don't miss anything? Yeah. And your face, you know, I tend yeah. to do the things that are open. We have two different um, appointment slots. We have a check spots appointment spot, which is more, it was intended for patients like you who, you know, get annual skin exams, but you have something pop up. And it's typically, we examine three to five spots of concern in between their two, um, in between their annuals. Um, so that, you know, account, but then you have a new patient show up for a check spots visit. The scheduler should have probably explained we needed a full skin exam, it didn't happen. I do that. Um, had one, um, a couple of weeks ago, he came in for a spot on his back. It was a pigmented basal cell, but he had a glaring um, pigmented spot that needed to come off. And he, he finally did let me take it off. It was a melanoma in situ. Um, but he had had bad experience. You know, we, it, you know, we accumulate their bad experiences and they can kind of project it on us. He did not want to be biopsied over and over and over for five or six things that all came back negative. Um, you know, so that can happen too, but it was a melanoma. So, you know, anything else? Y'all got any? No, that, that was fantastic. For the audience, um, how many people have their uh, patients lay flat for an exam? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very, it, there's a lot of variability. I think the take home messages are documentation, uh, for what's best in your patient, but also medical legally to protect us, and to really, as much as reasonably possible, leave no stone unturned and look at um, what you need to look at in a respectful manner where you're not crossing any lines with the patient and making sure that you have um, an escort or a, um, I guess I shouldn't say escort in Las Vegas, <laughs> a chaperone, I don't know if that's okay either. Someone else in the room with you. <laughs> to document what really happens. So I want to thank our esteemed panelists and our champion patients yes. for helping us out with this. I have a question. What do you guys do if the wife wants to come back with them to make sure you see everything? I'm fine with that. Yeah, usually let them Y'all are back. fine with that? We, we try to make them stay in the waiting room. Yeah, I agree. We try to as well. Um, I've encouraged wives to circle what they're yeah. worried about. Yeah. And I think that that helps. Um, what if they have side by side or back to back appointments? Separate room. Separate, separate room. Yes, yeah, separate rooms. We're, we try to do that, but some of them, some of them, they don't like to do that. 